Oh, yes. KEXP, K-E-X-P dot O-R-G. I'm Larry Mizell Jr. I'm here in the live room right now, and I'm so happy to tell you right now that I'm in here with the Velt. Um, I, I, I am so happy to have y'all here. Thank you so much. I feel like this is a, a long time coming. Um, and I know you got a beautiful new record that is the definition, the definition of a long time coming, uh, illuminated 89, 1989. Uh, and I know you got some music to get into, so let's get into it.
It's the Velt live right here on KEXP. Thank y'all for being here. A true wall of sound, beautiful stuff. The Velt, uh, founded in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, by twin brothers Daniel and Danny Chavis. Is it Chavis or Chavis? Chavis. 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 How did how did the Velt begin? How did this journey start? Well, uh, I was trying to graduate from high school unsuccessfully, and uh, I needed to learn English for uh, to, to, to graduate. So the teacher always picked on me, and she had me reading stories, and uh, I went to in Enlo. It was in, it's in Raleigh, and I turned the page, and she goes, Daniel, you're a good reader. Why don't you uh, read for us? And I turned the page, and it said, The Velt. And that was, we were called the Psycho Daisies at that time. Hmm. But when I saw that name, I was like, ah, okay. And I took it home to him, and he drew a picture of it. He was like, ah, we get back to it. And then later on, we just used the name. And the Velt is like, what, grasslands? Like yeah, in yeah. Africa? African it was from a Ray Bradbury story. Where, right. the, where the lions go to graze during the, during the rainy season. Right. And these two kids went in there and got, you know, all messed up on whatever. But, but um, we got to start from uh, the hardcore scene in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, via um, Coach No Conformity, Reed Mullen. Okay. God bless his heart. Back in 1983. And then we began to play around. But he was playing in juke joints. Um, wow. And I played gospel music, and, uh, you know, part-time. And then I got fired for playing too loud. And... Um, <laughs> And we got together and just started the band together with the guy named Robert Jackson, who passed away a long time ago. So then we began to play in Chapel Hill, and um, and uh, we got, you know, it's like a good college scene in Chapel Hill at the time. Yeah, you know, Super Chunks from there, right. Hovo. You know, it's good. It's a good scene down there. You know? Yeah, storied, storied scene. And um, I know some of the songs we heard tonight were from what was supposed to be your your debut, your major label debut, right? When I yeah. yeah, it was it was supposed to be called Marigolds. Yeah. Okay. And um, we had finished it in in England with Robin. And uh, hold on, Robin Guthrie. Robin, Robin Guthrie, yeah, yeah, from, from the Cocteau, the Cocteau Twins. Twins. Yeah, I just so, want to be clear. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, Robin from the Cocteau Twins. <laughs> yeah. In England, and um, they they said that they didn't they didn't get it, so we got dropped from that label. And then it just never came out. Yeah, they got it all right. They just didn't get the color right. That's all. We didn't fit yeah. the color scheme. So right, they didn't see it for y'all. They didn't get it, man. The guy said, uh, he said, he said, the gold, the girl from the Golden Palominos did it best. I'm like, I don't doubt that, but I mean, well, you know, teach his own. So huh? <laughs> and I mean, I've been listening to this record since it came out, and um, it just strikes me as a real lost treasure that I wish everybody had gotten to hear at the time. I mean, how did it feel, kind of having to walk away from that record? Um, we never really walked away from it. We played it yeah. since then. Word. Until this day, we never yeah. stopped playing it, actually, because we, uh, we we felt that the music was timeless, kind of. And I didn't think that uh, what they call shoegaze got a good shake, because when we were in England, they were just calling it that, because uh, it was a mention. It wasn't a term at that time. Yeah. Um, there's a band called Moose, and my friend Lincoln was in it, and he came back and said that, the interview was making fun of him because the shit. Yeah, actually, Lincoln Lincoln engineered this record. Okay. Lincoln yeah. Lincoln Fong engineered all these uh, Wolfgang Press color box. All the four eighty stuff. No, she did all gotcha. a bunch of four eighty stuff. Yeah. And he uh, uh, actually is doing his own stuff too. And uh, besides doing this record, mm -hmm. we took it to make it our own. We started our own label called Five BC. Yeah. And so we just started helping our friends like Clone, Ice Blink, uh, around. And just trying to regain the kind of stature that 4AD had back when it was kind of, you know, mm. kind of cool. So, because mm. none of them, those people, they weren't, they weren't feeling us back then. Like, you know, we went to no, they weren't. All of, of our, all of our influences back then were like, you know, cre a creation didn't get it. You know, they, it, it was like kind of like it was discouraging, but we just felt like, you know, yeah, effort. We, like we had the same it. manager as as uh, the Mary Chain in America. Mm. Yeah, and Alan McGee was said he goes, I wouldn't know what to do with you. <laughs> I feel like I've heard this cool. story so many times when it comes to especially rock acts consisting of people of color, fronted yeah. by people of color. So many stories like this where it's just like, it's oh, we don't understand. And and I I don't understand that. Well, what, what they understood, they understood, they understood enough to, to sign us. Yeah. They understood enough to sign us. And then they, they got home and figured out, wait a minute, did I just see some black dudes back there? You know? And then, yeah. <laughs> and then, they, then they say you're difficult to work with when you want to be creatively challenged and they'd yeah. be like, Yo, whenever well, we, whenever we had a problem, we became the problem. Whatever yeah. we wanted to do, that's the whole myth of my brother and I. It's always kind of funny. They joke about it. 
But when we know what we want to do by trial and it's error, not it's good. always, oh, well, you know, you guys type of thing. So we had a lot of doubters. Nah. And yeah. Bad. So whatever. It's, it's we, okay. just, we just didn't listen. And you guys had kind of a Northwest connection, right? Didn't a, a Star Dog put out a record oh, yeah. of yours? Years yeah. Ago? Okay. This, this is a good one. So Polygram thought that, uh, well, Mother Blood Bone had just broken up or something like the that. Guy, the guy died or something like that. And then Pearl Chain yeah. came yeah. around yeah. and they go, "Hey guys, to keep you guys really cool and indie, why don't you uh, say your first records on Star Dog, Mother Love Bone's label?" And we're like, "Okay, fine, whatever." So they put us on Star Dog. As our first gotcha. album, which was Marigold's, produced by Lincoln, and so we actually met Pearl Jam, and they were like, "They were like, hey man, you guys are cool, but that Ugly Kid Joe shit, nah." <laughs> oh, they also put out Ugly Kid Joe, yeah, right, yeah, at right, the time, right, yeah, right, right, yeah, like, like that was our competition at the time, because yeah, that, back then, so-called shoegaze, you couldn't give it away, no, hmm. you could not give it away, man. So imagine if you will, if some black dude was doing shoegaze stuff, then you, <laughs> even if you, even a harder sell. So right, yeah. so you kept on, you kept recording music. Yeah. Um, aphrodisiac came out. What was that? Ninety three. Uh, no, ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah. Miracles came 93. out. Yeah, and, came out. And 93. that was done by uh, Ray Shulman. Ray Shulman was in Gentle Giant. Uh, he produced the Sundays. Gotcha. And he produced Bjork. the Sundays. He produced a uh, half of the A.R. Kane uh, record. Shout out to A.R. Kane. Yeah. yeah, Rudy and them. Yeah, Rudy yeah. and them. <clears throat> um, that's how I even found out about y'all. I was talking to my brother, Eric Blood. I got to give it up to him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gushing Eric. about ARK. And he was like, yeah, them in the Velt, right? And I was yeah. just like, the met Eric through, like last time with yeah, you. Yeah, he opened for y'all. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and he was like, you, you, you don't know about the Velt? So I had to go do the math. And then <laughs> I saw you guys. And then, then I got the, the message from y'all that, you, that your, your 1989 record produced by, by Robin Guthrie was, was, was coming out soon. Yeah. How does it feel to see it? How's it feel? To 33 years um, after it was supposed to. It's, it's like passing a gallstone. <laughs> or what do you want to call it? It's like, you know, I, it's like being creatively constipated for the last 35 years because people try to stifle um, what might bring people together in some kind mm -hmm. of fact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like uh, we're not curing cancer here. We're just playing music. But uh, they made it really difficult for us in the past. So we just got together with the Hayato in early 2000 to keep the band going and whatnot. And, and the oldest member in here with us now is Alex Cox over here. Uh, if you look to my right of me, there's three white guys over here. <laughs> Marty. You gotta keep them separated. <laughs> LG and Alex. And What's Dale. Up, you got old Dale over here. Yeah, they, they got their own thing. He repping the AR Kane. Oh, I you know? see you. Uh, um, Martin's over there. Martin's in the Ice Blink. Uh, yeah, what we, what we were saying earlier, like yeah. Martin is in the Ice Blink, that we got them on our label. Word. Clone, and also uh, Debbie Echoes, that guy. Alex, he does, I don't know, well, Alex just does what, the museum, right? Whatever. Alex is, it was Alex's idea to put the band back together again, actually. Yeah. Nice one, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so after his fifth bourbon and him trying to hit, hit me in the face. we got old Dale over here. Yeah, yeah we got so. old Dale over here, yeah. So majority of us are from North Carolina, so it, it's great gotcha. to have people from North Carolina and uh, have them see that. It's more than what they think it is. There's a lot of bluegrass, yeah. a lot of country North Carolina, a lot of my friends play bluegrass, but there's not a lot like this. So we just persevered. Yeah. I saw something recently, you probably peeped this, uh, Lenny Kravitz was talking about how I think like Vibe and kind of black outlets had never really celebrated their, their black rock and roll. We were in Vibe one time. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You gave it a little blurb. Yeah. Okay. Ebony uh, too. Okay. But that well, that's what's up. Yeah, I mean, I, but Lenny, I mean, I, I mean, he has his own story to tell. But I mean, as far as we know, all of us don't have any kind of end way to that situation. If sure. people can complain, but as a unit, as a unity thing, it's not individual situation. They yes. don't want none of us in there. So you got to be. I mean, we're fifty-seven years old doing this stuff, dude. Mm -hmm. You think anybody want to hang around this long do this stuff? You know. And you guys, were you down with like Greg Tate, Black Rock uh, Coalition, and all that? Yeah, man. Yeah. Greg Tate, God bless his soul. Yeah. We had. Uh, Planned to do this thing called the Electric Underground Railroad mm. with Greg Tate. Um, God bless him. And um, man, his last gig with us, man, he called us up. We were walking back somewhere in, like, in New York to a flea market. He, he never calls us because he's kind of like, you know. Yeah, I saw his number. I said, I said, what does he want? I said, what, what does he want? You know, he's like, he said, we're all mad. We're all mad. We're all mad. We made no money the, the, the last night we played with him. He's like, yo, man, let's do this again, man. I'm like, mm, okay. You know, he, he, he had saw. The potential of having burnt sugar out there to yeah. um, a more alternative audience, and they loved them, man. You know, they loved, they loved, they loved it, and he got that vibe. Yeah. So the the festival was called Noir Bazaar, 
Electric Underground Railroad. And I started it in North Carolina because there wasn't anything like it. And I wanted to try to indoctrinate, you know, black kind of like psychedelic and shoegaze, but there, but there weren't any. Mm. No. So I couldn't shorten my, shorten my scope. So I just, sure. you know. Open it up. Yeah, the, the idea of it is black in essence. That's mm -hmm. all that mattered to me. So, but there are a lot of young people these days oh, man. that like shoegaze and a lot of young ladies and whatnot that are getting into the sound that I, I would have never thought. Yeah. We didn't either, you know? man. When we've been playing this record on um, this tour, I'm like, I was like, hey, man, you guys influenced me and so on. So I'm like, man, do you know what I really do? <laughs> like, <laughs> they, they, they really like the stuff, man. And like, you know, through people like Marty and LG, and we all trying to like bring it around to different clubs. We show our bands and whatnot, Thank you know. You, and um, I think that we're making a difference to some people who wouldn't see us otherwise. Yeah. I, the people I've known who've known about you for a long time, your example has meant a lot to them. Seeing you, the visibility, what, what you guys put down. And that's that's a really important piece. And that's part of, like I, I told you the other night, like uh, like 15-year-old me is kind of like, damn, I wish, I wish I'd known. I wish I'd had this. But I'm glad that this record is out now and we can appreciate your music now and that you guys are out playing. What is next? Um, to put out the new stuff that we have been having for like yeah, the we, last we, few years. We, we, so bad. We, we get bored really easily. So we got lots of fragments of stuff, you know, yeah. and lately, you know, Alex has done some stuff we've been playing on and, you know, maybe Marty has stuff and we, we, we don't want to stagnate and yeah. just do the same old because basically, you know, we have these guitars and everything, but it really comes alive when we do it live because it gets boring just me and him yeah. and Hayato. So, I mean, we do it together, but the nucleus of the writing is here. So, yeah. It's live, really, because I, I love those records. When I saw y'all, I was like, oh, my God, this yeah. is crushing right now. Yeah, we use a lot of um, yeah. um, majority of yeah, programming, which would be good to work with Eric Blood, you know, and them. That, that, that was our concept in the beginning. The concept was to work with the DJ in the beginning, mm. and, and they just didn't want to hear it. We were like, well... We want to use a DJ to produce because their because their the concept of the how to execute the production would be different. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like if you had the Bomb Squad, sure, like sure, We sure, wanted sure. the Bomb Squad. We wanted to get um, Living Color did that. They they uh, messed with them a little bit. Yeah, and, and, but this is know. 1980. This is 1988, 89. Yeah. Like we asked them. They're like, what? What? Run DMC beat? Do what? They didn't. They didn't get none of that, man. Right. You know, we wanted, wanted uh, Timberland. Timberland was one of them. We said they were like, nah. You guys are well, not quite from the same neck of the woods, but yeah, a down south kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like a lot of the trap beat stuff that we mess with too. You know, they wouldn't have that. So they don't have the concept to do that. They just want to stay keep it in a rock. Like every band was selling the bad brains with Joseph and them. Like, but yeah, but there's more to that. You know, what I'm saying not knocking Joe and them, but I'm just saying, but they, they got more to to happen. Like more futuristic blacktronic sound. So yeah. To speak. No, I appreciate that the voraciousness in in your sound. I, I was really blown away. Like I told you when uh off the record uh came out a couple of years ago and you, you had the interpolation of of a mob deep song one of my favorites yeah and i was just like oh my god this sounds so good as a shoegaze song yeah, who wouldn't who wouldn't hear that i yeah, mean like right. when i first heard, I said, wait a minute it sounded like susie the band she's like mm, mm -hmm. like right. you know like happy house right you know and i said wait a minute i've got to flip that so hayato did the beat beat for it and, he, and we flipped it like that you know that was how many years ago was that hayato was what's so much style 20, it was 20 years ago we did that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so how, that's yeah, how, I guess that song's about that old. Yeah, wow. but, but that's how, you know, we were thinking back then. Yeah. But, you know, you can imagine what we're thinking now. Right. So, you know, but they, then they're catching up to it, I feel, so to speak. Yeah. I know you, you covered like a Vaporwave song. Yes. Uh, yeah, Joy, we call it Joy, but it's by this guy named Alex. He's a uh, Vaporwave yeah. artist, you know. And um, it's called, a song called I Love You. And we're trying to get that out next time. But we're trying to get in contact with the guy. If, you, if you're watching this, dude, what's up? You know? <laughs> right on. So, I hope so. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for coming through. I'm glad we could put this together and that y'all could share this music with folks. Illuminate, Illuminated 1989, fantastic record. Uh, and I, I hope the world gets to hear it this time. All, the, all, the, all four corners of it, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah I want to thank Seattle, by the way. I mean. Seattle loves y'all. I've noticed yeah, that. Everybody's coming out. It's I'm, just like, yo. Yeah, I'm kind of blown away by that, but thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, right. they got my our crew over here, Marty, yeah. LG, Alex. You know. Right on. Good old Dale here. Good old Dale over here. <laughs> well, thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Larry. The Velt, live on KEXP. 
I'm Larry Mizell Jr. and I want to thank you all for powering KXP and allowing programming like this to happen, making things like this happen for more people to hear and see. Uh, if you love it, if you dig it, go to uh, kxp.org, find out more, go to the YouTube, like, subscribe, all of that. Thank you so much for powering the place where the music matters. KEXP. Discover new music at kexp.org.